Want to see me do something inspired by Mike Mitchell, Richard Spaven, Spanky, and Marcus Gilmore that I think is kind of a secret door into their vocabulary? Here it is. We see the regular 3-4 groove here. Then I do the thing here. Ben Bratton, the guy who wrote this track, actually wrote it based around that beat. In fact, in the original, it's got those transitions already in the track. And it's all based around this beat that I sent to Ben when we were deciding what to do for Minel. I call it sextuplizing. And here are some real world examples of the drumming that inspired it. Here's Spanky. Here's Spaven. Here's Mike. And here's Marcus. And once you have this down, you'll start hearing funky ideas like these too. Today on 8020, sex and why it's hip to be hexagonal. Stay tuned. For starters, let's talk a little about systems. Because when I think about what gets me going on a Saturday, <laughs> it's systems, am I right? <laughs> anyway, some systems can be really complex. I think of this, for instance. Or something like the Indian classical system. In either case, you're looking at a months long or potentially years long process to learn the entire language. Let's call this the front door. It's the most intensive, but it can change your playing forever. On the other end of the spectrum is something I'd call drive-by inspiration, where you see the result of someone learning a deep system and you just kind of lazily copy the surface level. An analogy would be something I mentioned in a previous video, a Fred Armisen impression. It can be a really good impression, but it's still an impression, but it can also save you time. I'd call that the backdoor approach. And just to borrow fully from the college admissions scandal, there is another way, what I'd call the side door. Some might even say secret door, particularly if they want to clicks on YouTube. That's doing an impression of what others are doing until you've got enough data to make your own simpler system. Maybe another good word for this would be cargo cult. Fun fact, I actually made an 80-20 video about cargo cults. Search it if you're interested. But let's talk about why sex tuplization is a cargo cult solution. First, I observed stuff drummers like Spanky and Spaven were doing. Then, I did an impression of it, without giving it much thought. Gradually, those bad impressions grew to be their own thing, which I understood more and more deeply. From there, I was able to pull out some algorithms, which just means repeated instructions on how to do stuff. So I'd end up with idioms like this. The cool thing about this cargo cult method is at the end you have your own system, which isn't just a verbatim copy of someone else's. And the only reason to have a system is if it saves you time chunking a lot of new vocabulary. And it's vocabulary you like, musically speaking. Otherwise, it's just a system for a system's sake. Which, unless it's Saturday, you know what I mean? Anyway, long story short, the cargo cult system of sex tuplization is a good one, and it's one that's pointed me toward new and, I think, good musical vocabulary. Let's check out some now. From checking out Spaven or Marcus stuff like this, I was messing around with weird ideas like these. It's quarter note triplety and kind of random. Eventually, I settled on kind of a clave underneath it. I'm pretty sure it started in six, which led to, well, the minor shoot. But, and here's the other vocabulary you can derive from the system part, I discovered it also works in other meters. Seven. Five. 
five. And four, four. By the way, if you're starting to think, I'd like a free transcription of this stuff, I got you. Just click the link below the player and enter your email in on the next page. Anyway, that's the what other vocabulary can you derive from the system part. And that also means when I go to improvise now, I've bootstrapped a bunch of new ideas, even if they don't sound exactly like the system. But more on that later. For now, let's talk about how you actually implement some of this. In this demo, I'm going to play exactly what I played at Minel. I'll start out in a slow three, then I'll play a simplified version of the clave at the sextuplet level. You can even add an intermediate step of playing sextuplets with your left hand, then go to the clave. I'd try this in a loop. Basic beat, sextuple at ghost notes with the backbeat, sextupleized. But Nate, what metronome placement should we use? Good question. If and only if you're intermediate or above, try it with the metronome on the last triplet. If you're advanced or otherwise masochistic, try it with the metronome only on beat 3. Everyone else, I'd put it on quarters. So keep playing your loop. Make sure it's clean, make sure it's in time. Then, and only then, start to introduce a little orchestration. You guys want a little extra credit? Let me give you the 5, 7, and 4, 4 versions of this. Here's the 5 version. Just as before, you can start with a basic beat in 5, either straight or swung. Then you can add the sextuplet ghost notes. Then you can play the clave. Then once it's feeling good, you can orchestrate. Here's the seven. And here it is in eight, or four.
talk about the other crazy thing I do, which you can do for extra credit. It's changing meters with a constant metronome. I put the metronome on the last beat of the bar, whatever the meter. Let's say we're doing this in six, although for purposes of the metronome, it'll sound more like three. So I'm playing the clave in six or three for a while. Then I decide I want to modulate to seven. Simple. I just play seven beats in the same space I was playing six without changing the metronome. And here it's two clicks per bar, so the metronome will bisect the bar on the end of seven and on beat four. Depending on the tempo, I can have the subdivision and turn it into a slow four. Then I don't have video of this, but I can play five beats in the same space I was playing for. And that's my secret to playing a whole practice session while being too lazy to change my metronome. Do you guys want a whole video on that? Leave a comment below. Finally, I talked about what these cargo cult or side door or secret door systems open up for you in terms of improvisation. After you practice this for like a week, just try putting the metronome on and seeing what you hear. Here, I'm just improvising in five. And that's how you get fired from the gig. Anyway, you guys, hope you've enjoyed this one. This is a more playing-y lesson that I've done in a while, and a few of you requested that. It's also a little more advanced than usual, and let me know in the comments if you want to see more lessons like this. In the meantime, as I said, if you need a transcription of this, it's free. Just click the link below the player and enter your email address in on the next page. Be back next week with a, probably another rant. Either way, a new lesson of the week. Thanks, you guys. It's been real. Let's get into a mood. Let's get into a mood here, you guys. <laughs> 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 <laughs>